Welcome back to the Sedona International Film Festival 2020 live stream. I'm Tanya June Moore. Special thanks to the Sedona Advertising Agency, Broadcast Rentals, and the Sedona Rouge for making this media room possible this year. And we have some really incredible, huge filmmakers in the seat with us now. This film's going bonkers. Please introduce yourselves in the film. Hi, Tanya. My name is J. Paul Daratani, and I am the producer and also the writer for Foster Boy. And I'm John Schimmel, and I'm executive producer of Foster Boy. Wow, this film is blowing up. I mean, I mean, just Googling it brings up incredible, positive reviews and statements and, and people feeling really good about it. How's, how's that feedback for you? Oh, it's been wonderful. It's, first of all, I think this is uh, our, I think we're on 14 awards so far that we've won mm. at different festivals. Although I gotta say that the Sedona International Film Festival is the prettiest place I've been. I may get in trouble with the other folks, but and there's some great films here, so and it's a great crowd. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we just passed 10,000 likes mm -hmm. on Facebook, and so if you're out there, please like our film. That helps us. We're very close to getting a distributor. We have two offers, um, and more importantly, Tanya, it's a film that speaks about a very important issue, and that's yes. uh, children in foster care and the privatization of the foster care industry. Mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't be an industry, it should be a place where children feel safe and they're not products. Correct. And this film hits that home very hard. Thank you, I hope so. Yeah, and it's based on a true story. It's based on a, on a case that Jay um, won um, some years ago. Uh, it's a hideous true story that, that Jay um, fictionalized in in the screenplay. In the narrative. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's, a, I'm also a lawyer. Uh, that's my day job. That's how I make <laughs> the money so far. Um, but I've, uh, about 20 years ago, I was given a case and I didn't know what to do with it at first and it involved a child who was abused in the foster care system very ser seriously. And then I won that case, start writing some articles about it, and then I wound up getting more and more cases and I was just struck at how awful so many kids are treated in the foster care system. Not to say that all of them are. Right. And there's some wonderful, beautiful parents out there, uh, foster parents. I hope this movie, though, sheds light on um, some of the companies that are less unethical and the problems we have in foster care and the fact that we keep trying to um, take these kids and again, I'm gonna say treat them as products rather than make sure they have a great home. We have almost half a million kids in foster care in the United States. Mm -hmm. And 40% of them when they age out within three years, wind up dead on the streets or in jail. And that's a horrible statistic. It yes. shouldn't happen. So this is an amalgamation of a couple stories, actually. And it's a fictionalized lawyer, because I had to create a little more conflict. I was going to ask you, how did Matthew Modine match up to you? Well, I, I'm not the lawyer, so to speak. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, we had to create more conflict. It couldn't yes. be a uh, trial lawyer that believes in it. So. What we have is Matthew Modine, who plays his part wonderfully. And matter of fact, he's playing a lawyer again, very shortly. And what what's the show on Broadway? The uh, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm -hmm. So I'll be. Oh, actually, I got I can't say that yet. Oh, too late. Too You've late. Let the cat um, out of the bag. Anyway, um, he's. Tell you anything. He is an amazing <laughs> uh, actor that did a brilliant job with uh, the part. He was. Uh, uh, he plays a lawyer who can't really relate to. Jamal, he's white, he's closed up, he is very corporate. And then on the other hand, we have Jamal, played by the brilliant new actor, wow. I mean, Shane Paul McGee, who I just think, I think gives an Oscar award when he performance. And Shane basically takes it home, and, and the two of them don't trust each other. They don't like each other, for all of the reasons, racially, socioeconomically, and so forth. But then they have to learn to fight together, and they do develop this wonderful relationship. What else happens, I don't want to tell you. Yeah, let's I, not share I, that I part. Yeah. Uh, How did it. you get Shaquille involved? Um, our great friend, Peter Samuelson, who's a, a producer on the project, um, who um, has, he's a, a major film producer, but he has transitioned into major serial um, pro-social entrepreneur, and he seems to be able to summon people from the sky. I don't really understand how. That's very Sedona-esque. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Well, this is the LA version of that. <laughs> <laughs> but he, but he's he is willing to and able to reach out to. Anyway, Peter um, 
thought that Shaquille would re react to the material and was prescient in that thought. And uh, Shaquille has, has dived in you yeah. know, head and shoulders. It, it, he's, he's being a remarkable advocate for the film and for foster kids. Yeah. Well, when, when I first met him, he said, uh, why are we thinking small? Why aren't we taking this and making a series out of some of the stories you have? Mm -hmm. And so that's what he's working on right now. Um, and I won't tell, I won't blow that one. Uh, he's talking to a Don't few blow different. That's secret out that's there. That's secret the out there. But he's talking to a few different um, uh, streaming services that may take this as a series, and that would be a wonderful thing. And it would involve stories about foster kids and what they go through, and it includes everybody, everything from. Uh, the stories about some of the kids that were in cages at the border when they were separated from their parents, mm -hmm. to children on the streets in Chicago, New York, and L.A., and even in Arizona. Yeah, um, uh, everywhere. Yeah, they're yeah. everywhere. And um, so many of them are homeless right now even, or they run away from foster care mm -hmm. situations, and they don't go back, and they wind up on the streets. And um, again, I just think we could do so much better. I think we could make progress. And Shaquille, being an advocate for us, has just... Uh, done an amazing job. Well, and I'm really hoping that films like these, because there are more and more of them coming out where people are really drawing together and, and it's not about, we just talked about this in the last interview, it's not about race, it's not about right. your socioeconomic background, it's not about whether you're conservative or, or liberal, it's about humanity. Yeah, and I think we can all come together surrounding and, kids. And, and this film is very much right on point with the, your thumb on the pulse of that and I think it's going to move a lot of people to see the reality. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people get the, the other theme about foster care abuse and so forth but a underlying theme of this movie is basically the, the differences we have because obviously Matthew comes from one world and right. Jamal comes from but a different world but there's so ground. much common ground exactly. Tanya. There's always common ground. Always common ground. So please like their film on Facebook, follow it, it's incredibly uh, poignant and timely as most films are creatives really jump in and uh, I want to show you guys the trailer so you can watch it this week here at the Sedona Film Festival screening <laughs> Mr. Randolph, I see you more than to see my grandchildren. Representing yourself is not a good idea. Meet your new lawyer, Michael Trainer. He got hurt. He wants money from the people he thinks are responsible. He'll be lucky to get a dime. Why do I have to have you as my lawyer? Your Honor, this is a known corporation versus a kid that looks like a thug. Thug? When Jamal Randolph was a 10-year-old child, Belcourt ignored his repeated complaints that a 16-year-old that they had placed tortured him for a three-year period. Belcourt upped the offer to $150,000. I already said no. Belcourt took over where the government failed, Mr. Trainer. The jury's not going to believe a black drug dealer. They're my verses, but my past is stupid. No, it's not stupid. Jamal. You write, don't you? This is a nuisance case, Mr. Trainer. Take the offer. I will destroy you and your fucking company! Sometimes when we meet people, we don't see them for who they truly are. I'm sorry that I did not see you, Jamal. had to do a little plug for your son. <laughs> when is it uh, screening here? Today. Today and Saturday. Okay, so you have two chances to see this one at the Sedona Film Festival. Uh, I think we're definitely going to see it out in the world even more so than he at festivals. Uh, but make sure that you're here to see it. Sold out crowds are, are definitely prevalent here. So. Yeah, I've been seeing that. And I can't wait to hear your feedback. Stay tuned for the next interview. Our hashtags this year are Sedona Film Fest 2020 and Sedona Film Fest 26.